idcwoodcraft.com. Hello, my CNC brother or sister. I'm Garrett with IDC Woodcraft. Welcome to this video where I'm going to teach you something in the Vectric software, and that is how to create exact angles. I got an email from our CNC brother, David, who was asking how he can do this. And I know a lot of people struggled with this, and I struggled with this in the beginning. So I'm going to give you a quick run through on how to make sure that you get exact angles, and I'm going to give you some extra tips about being able to rotate your lines to the proper angles that you want. So we're going to dive right into the software and show you how to do this. This is going to work in any of the Vectric software that you have, meaning Cut 2D, the V-Carve, and the Aspire versions. And by the way, this video is brought to you by IDC Woodcraft, your CNC router bit supply company. Little advertisement for you. I just had to slip that in. All right, let's dive into the Vectric software and show you how to get your exact angles. Let's go. We are now in the Vectric software and I'm going to show you how to get exact angles on your lines that you draw so that David can draw an isosceles triangle with the exact angle that he wants and also relative to the exact point on the line that he wants to do it on. You'll understand what I mean as I move into this. Now, this will work in any of the Vectric software, which means Cut 2D, V-Carve, and Aspire. The first thing I want to do is make sure that the snaps are turned on. It's not necessary, but for me, I want to make sure that the snap feature is turned on. So in the upper right of the screen, there are about 12 icons. The first two on the left, I want them to have boxes around them and have a blue appearance. So what I mean by boxes around them, if I click them, you see that the box is turned off on that one. That means that that snap feature is no longer active. I want that turned on. And the reason I like to have that turned on is because when I try to draw lines, the software will grab endpoints of other lines or intersections and what have you. It's just my preferred way of doing it. But it is not absolutely necessary at the point for what I'm showing you. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is draw a line. We're going to come up to create vectors. Second row down, first icon to the left. When you hover over it, it says draw line, polyline. The icon has a zigzag look to it. Select that, and now we are in line mode, and I am simply going to draw a line. So I'll just draw a horizontal line to any length. And when I have that line drawn, so you can see the software wants to start another line, but I don't want another line. I'm simply going to hit the escape button to end that function. And we have also exited line mode. So the first thing, in order to rotate a project, double click on the thing you want to rotate. So I'm going to click again on that line and you see we have all these beads that have shown up on the project. The white circles are sizing beads meaning if I grab one of the white circles, I will change the length of the line. If you have a 2D element like a box, then the corner elements and the, all the buttons will change the size of the box, both height-wise and width-wise. But what we are concerned about is the blue dot that is showing up on the four corners. This is going to give us the ability to rotate this project. When you hover over any of the dots, like I am in the upper right blue dot, you see your cursor gets a little circle around it. That means that we can now rotate this line. When you hold your left mouse button down while you're hovering over that, we can now pull that line around. And you see it's rotating based on the center of the line. Now I can drop this line anywhere I want. But that does not give me an exact rotation. The way I dropped it was by letting go of the left mouse button. So we're going to hit Control Z, and that's going to bring the line back to, to level. The next thing we can do is grab any one of these buttons again, and hold it, and then type in exactly what we want. So I'm going to type in 11.5, because that's the angle that David wants. And then I hit the enter. Now I'm still holding my left mouse button down. I've typed in 11.5 and now I hit enter. And now the line has rotated 11.5 degrees. Now it has rotated off the center of the project. Now let's say I wanted to rotate it downward minus 11.5 instead. 
that is done by typing in minus 11.5. Now, if I typed in 11, minus 11.5 right now, it's going to rotate relative from its current position, which is about right here. So if I come up here and I type in minus 11.5 while I'm holding my left mouse button down and hit enter, it has now come back to horizontal, which was 11.5 in the negative direction. When you rotate projects, rotating counterclockwise is a positive rotation direction. Rotating clockwise is a negative rotating direction. So now we want to rotate this line based on a specific point on the line. In other words, I want to rotate the line from the end point of the line right over here. So now we can get into the more advanced features of rotating lines where you can get the exact rotation that you want. While you have your item selected, press the letter R on your keyboard and you will see the rotate menu comes up on the left and we have several selections in here. And then on our project, you notice that a little donut has showed up at the center of the line. The donut is our point of rotation. Now, right now, we have all the dots around the line and we have the donut and we are in rotate mode at the moment. So right now, if I grab that blue dot in the upper right or lower right or upper left or lower left, we will rotate about that donut center. You can see there's a little plus sign at the very middle of the line. That means that's the point of rotation. So I'm going to drop the line right there and then press control Z to undo that move. Now, what if I want to change my point of rotation, which would be the end point of the line? In order to do that, we need to tell the software that we are going to do this relative to coordinates. If you look over in the rotate area, there is a rectangle with four round circles around it, one in the middle, and then there's one that says use coordinates. Right now, the one in the middle is selected, and that is telling me that I am rotating the project based on center because we are in the center of the rectangle. If I want to rotate it from the end point of the line, I can click either one of these dots on the left and that means that I am now changing my rotation point from the left edge of the line. You can now see that the donut has moved to the end of the line. Watch the donut. I am going to select the right side of the box and the donut has now jumped to the other side. That means I am now in control of this that I can change my point of rotation based on the end of the project. Now I can click the center of the box and now the donut has moved back to the center. So I want to rotate the line based on the, the end point of the line right where it's at right now. So I am simply going to select the left side of the box and the donut has now moved. And now you can see if I select the line or the dot, now my rotation point is at that endpoint of the line. I'm going to control Z. I'm going to move it to the other side, to the right side. The donut has moved and now I'm going to grab the same dot and now you can see it is now rotating from that point. We're going to hit control Z again and now we can select any point we want for this thing to rotate. Simply hover over that donut, hold your left mouse button down and drag that donut around. So I have drug it up to here. And now when I click that rotate, I am now rotating around that new center point. Sometimes that will show up and you're not sure why that has happened. When you see that donut, you simply need to be in rotate mode and go to the box center and simply click the center button. But don't do that until you unrotate it in case you rotated it somewhere where you didn't want to. So I'm gonna hit control Z and then I'm going to come back and select box center and the donut has now returned to the center of the project. So now let's get to the exact angle that we want. We want to rotate off the left end point of the line. So I'm going to select either point on the left of this rectangle. 
Down in type of rotation, I'm going to switch to absolute. Now we want this line to rotate 11.5 exactly. So it's very simple at this point. Down where it says angle, we'll simply type in 11.5 and click apply. And the line has rotated exactly 11.5. Let's say we want to complete this isosceles triangle, so we have exactly 11.5 plus 11.5, which would be 23 degrees between the upper and lower. It's very easy to do. We are going to mirror this line. I want to create a second line by clicking the polyline. I'm going to click on the endpoint and simply come across and draw a line. And then I'm going to hit the escape button to get out of it. Then we want to select the angled line that we want to rotate. Hold the shift button down and select the second line. Then we will come into the mirror command. Under transform objects, first set of icons, which is only one row, the fourth one in, it says mirror selected object. When we select that, we have now selected everything in here. You can see there are dots all around the thing. But we are going to come down and select the button that says flip about line. When I select that, we are going to create a mirrored copy about the horizontal line. I'm going to select it now. And now you can see we have the two lines. And this is now exactly 23 degrees, and we will go find out. So this middle line, we don't need anymore, so we're going to select it and delete. And then we are going to get into the dimension function, which is under create layers. The bottom row, there is a little dimension line. You want to select that to find the dimensions. So we select that. Then the menu pops up and we want to get the angle dimension selected. So it has the selector buttons next to each type. We have angles selected. Then we'll come in and select the endpoint, which is our reference. And then the two lines we want to measure our angle between. And when we come out, we will create a dimension line. And then we can create, uh, then we can position our dimension text. I'll put it on the inside. And you can see that we are now exactly 23 degrees. There is more you can do with the rotate function, but I wanted to make sure that you understood the basics of creating the exact angles that you want to get. David, I hope this helped you out. And for you, my CNC brother and sister, I hope this helped you as well. Be sure to check the description down below for anything I might have missed in this video that I needed to make sure it got covered in what I covered here. Also, if this was helpful, give me a thumbs up by hitting the thumbs up button just below this video. With that, I hope you have a great day, better tomorrow, and happy CNCing idcwoodcraft.com.